our dice. Welcome to the Stateless Codecast. This is episode number 16 in our series nerddice.com where we build a tabletop management application using Ruby on Rails. So in our previous videos we've been setting up user authentication with Devise. In our, um, we've kind of installed the gem, configured the gem, uh, made it work with uh, Turbo, uh, the kind of default Rails 7 implementation, which current version of Devise doesn't um, support out of the box. Uh, and then we also uh, modified the views to work with both Turbo and Tailwind, which is the front front end um, kind of framework we're using for CSS style and styling. It does not a CSS framework. Um, so in this episode, we're going to try to flesh out this um, kind of capability. Users can sign up and confirm an account. So ordinarily, when we're doing features that we're developing ourselves, we're going to wind up kind of write, use a test driven development approach. So you write the failing test, you do the um, kind of iterate and do the bare minimum to get the test to pass. And then you refactor your code uh, to ma and make sure the test continues passing uh, kind of that pattern of red, green refactor. In this case, we are testing interactions related to kind of third party code. So the, the device uh, Ruby gem is a plugin that we include in this application. And um, it's something that um, usually you, you, you don't explicitly go and test something related to other, um, other gems necessarily, like they, they've got their own tests and stuff like that. But in, in this case, we're using Devise as a framework for our authentication. So we need to test that this particular authentication for this particular Rails application is working as intended. Uh, and so that's what we're going to, to do here. So, um, and we're going to be using, because um, uh, as we've demonstrated in some of the previous videos, some of the stuff uh, as doesn't work quite the way you'd expect it to until you make a couple of fixes with, um, with Turbo and Devise and Tailwind all working together. So we want to um, test this, in this case, um, primarily with a um, kind of a capybara um, selenium driven rails application system test so we'll do that what we'll, we'll do first and i move this into progress is go through the um the process ourselves kind of manually test it make sure that it's working but we don't want to go in and manually test every single uh something with the browser every single time we make a change to our app and then i um all, all these other things like we don't don't want to go and Every time we make a change, test everywhere in the app. So what we're going to do is automate what we're doing manually using the application system tests. So we'll start here. So what we want to do is we're doing uh, user can sign up. So um, we'll go here to the root path and click on the sign up link and be, um, make sure the sign up shows here we're in the right place with the right content and so we're requesting an email and then we've got password and password confirmation so we need to fill that in and we'll um, kind of concern ourselves with the happy path here so let's say I'll um, So I fill in um, the password with what I expect. I fill in the password confirmation with what I expect. I click sign up. I'm expecting to see a flash message saying that an email has been sent to me with whatever. Um, so I click sign up. Me a message with the confirmation link has been sent to your email address. I didn't use a real email address, so I need to go into the um, the Rails console, or not the, the, the server history here, and find that um, that confirmation that we just generated. 
So we've got this here. So this is what would be in the email. Let me see if I can make this bigger. I don't know why it got so small. There we go. Okay, so uh, here's going to, um, oh, that's not our person though. Uh, from stateless code and then to testing example.com. So this is the email we want. So I click on this. So the next thing we do in our um, in our flow is we go and visit that link. So um, the confirmation link with the uh, the confirmation token. We um, see that and now we see our email has been successfully confirmed and now I should be able to um, sign in with this user. and log in. And we have been successful in doing that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to um, create an application system test case that tests that same functionality. So I'll go in to my um, application directory here and so test and then we've got the um, the system folder here so the system is where we would put our application system test case we have um, in our previous uh, epic before we started working with devise we set up the ability where it like the default driver is headless chrome but we can override that by using the uh, browser test driver environment variable so if for whatever reason during this video, if the tests don't work as intended, we can go in and, and um, see what the screenshots are. We can um, throw in a debugger statement if we want and have a, the, uh, the page pause on that. Uh, so we'll get going here and um, we'll call this, um, I'll, I'll create a whole subfolder here for device. All right, so create a new file here called user sign up test dot rb. And I probably could have generated that actually, but we'll, um, We'll do it for this one. We'll, we'll do it manually, and then um, actually, let's see the command for testing. Test. Did Rails G, right? Yeah, Rails G. Uh, system test. Rails G system test. So we'll actually, um, yeah, we'll delete this file altogether. Actually, what we'll, what we'll do is we'll generate the system test. It won't go into that device subfolder, and then I'll, I'll overwrite it to, uh, to do that. So Rails G system test. I wonder if it will. Space. Oh, it came close. User sign ups test, but you can see there it uh, uh, it, it actually namespaced it though, uh, which might not be a problem. Um, we'll just make the the up there. And then we'll just move it. Go. 
come on. So we've moved it to the location that we want and um, it's requiring application system test case, which is what we've got here, uh, which itself um, inherits from action dispatch te system test case. And then um, we will uh, create our test. So I'll, uh, what I'll do is I'll pause and paste in some, um, some code and then we'll, um, or I'll write the code and then we'll, we'll talk through it uh, the first iteration of it and um, go from there. All right, so let's take a look at what we've got here. So I did um, do a little bit of probably premature refactoring here. So I've got a new user email, which is different than the ones that we've got in our fixtures, um, new user password, and then a confirmation text, confirm text. This is the um, that flash message that we get there when we um, successfully click on that. We're going to assert that that is showing up in our DOM. So um, the because we're using a UUID for our user, we're going to do a start time uh, with the, the current start time um, because we can't trust user.last um, the default Rails implementation. It sorts by your primary key and your, your last created user won't necessarily be uh, the last one, the one that shows up when you do user.last. So we're kind of taking what the start time is and then asserting the first user created on or after that, uh, that start time. Uh, we're going to visit the welcome URL. So we can do that in a non-signed up fashion here. So we've got um, our sign up and our login links there that we can assert about. And then we're asserting that there's no text pres present for uh, visit the members area and log out. Uh, and this is, um, now we'll take a look on sign in. So we're gonna click sign up, sign up, not sign in. So sign up, we click on that. And then we're going to use the the helper methods here. So we we just used visit. That's one of the helper methods available to us, and we can provide a Rails um, URL helper path there. Or you could, um, I would recommend doing a, a helper URL uh, path, and you can do that. Like if you got a want to do a show page of a particular record, you can like do whatever your record is in the, um, the parentheses there. So that's available to us. Uh, and then assert text is asserting that this text shows up on the page that we're, um, that we're visiting. Assert no text is uh, kind of the, the, the negation of that, uh, that this doesn't show up on the page. And then, um, so now we're gonna do click on sign up. So that's the click on helper. We do this, we've done that, and now we're gonna make assertions about the page that we see there. Um, so we want to assert that the sign up text is there, that the um, they're telling us password, eight characters minimum. So the eight is something that we configured in our device configuration. The default is six there. So um, we can see that device is honoring that. And if we go and look at our view, Let's see how that's constructed here. Registrations new. So um, minimum password length is what's being interpol interpolated there um, for the um, the password. So it's doing a um, the Rails helper there. If minimum password length, then it indicates what the uh, that that password minimum is there and you can see that that is working as intended and we tested for it uh, and then there's a field for the password confirmation so now back in our uh, no, let's make sure that we're doing this in the correct context we don't want to lose all of our hard hard 
one effort here. So we've got these here, where were we? We were at, uh, so now we've made assertions about the particulars of this page. Uh, now we're going to fill in the email with uh, our new user email, fill in the password with the new user password. These are the items we had here up in our setup block. And then the, the password confirmation also with that new user password. And then we're going to click on sign up. So let's go back and do this. And click on set up, sign up. So we want to assert that this flash message is present. The text is present. Um, and so we do that and then we're confirming that our um, our text is uh, is there we could essentially re redo our um, our initial uh, set of assertions there if we want um, with the addition of the um, of the text and then um, we're going to now query. So this is a local variable here. We're querying user, the user model dot where, and then created at is greater than or equal to that start time that we had in our um, visit welcome URL uh, right before our visit welcome URL there. So we're going to find that one user and um, take the, the first one that we we do. We could probably do the, the take there rather than first. Um, in fact, I will, I will change that to take because we don't really can, that, that's almost um, misleading. We don't care about the order because um, we expect there to only, only be one, so we're not going to, to do that there. Um, we're going to assert that the that user's confirmed at value is um, is nil because we haven't confirmed the user yet and then assert that the uh, confirmation token of that user is not nil. Then we're going to uh, confirm that user so we're going to visit that user confirmation URL so this is similar to what we did in the um, in the Rails server output here where we take this so this is um, let's take a look at the helper here. So users confirmation, so that is confirmation URL, and then confirmation token, that's our parameter. So if we go back, uh, confirmation token equals, so we've got that, that question mark there, meaning the start of our parameters, confirmation token equals, and then our confirmation token value. And that's um, how you do that is by visiting that and it says your email address has been successfully confirmed. And then we're in the login, uh, taken to the login page when that happens. So uh, email address has been successfully confirmed. You log in. We're going to assert that the remember me is there. And it is. We're going to fill in the email and the password we're going to check remember me click on login and then we're going to uh, now um, as we could say th this is taking us back to the um, back to the welcome URL but with the different um, set of text there we can if we want to be a little bit over um, Now we're going to say, we'll just reverse these two, assert no text, no text, and then assert text on these. And then we're going to um, 
click on visited visit the members area and then so click on member member me and then we're going to click on login and then click on visit the members area and then we're seeing that authenticated index which we know from our controller tests and from testing it out is um, behind a login wall so uh, if you click on log out and then try to visit it you're going to say get that you need to sign up or sign up sign in or sign up before continuing so I think we've got that flow pretty much captured here on our uh, on our test case so we're going to do that and then we're going to try to run this so rails test system And we've got one run, 18 assertions, zero failures, zero errors, zero, zero skips. Uh, let's. That was almost went too smoothly. So let's. Um, I don't know. Just change this so that it says smog in instead of log in, so that we know that's going to fail if it's if we have a an incorrect assertion here. So now we should just have the one assertion because it didn't. It, it's going to fail fast if on all the rest of the assertions of the, or two assertions. Um, so expected to find text smog in, but did not find um, find it in the, the list of the text there. So even if we are running in headless mode, let's take a look at our files here. We're in the, the directory here, and we go to temp screenshots and failures, signing up, and confirming a new user. So even if you um, are in headless mode, it will still give you a screenshot of what the, uh, the screen looks like. But let's say we wanted to troubleshoot this. I will... Um, put a debugger statement before this and now I'm going to try to run this so what did I can never remember what my browser test driver Got that. As you see, uh, with the debugger there, it stopped um, and kind of halted there. Um, shows where in the um, where in the test we've stopped. I can go in here and oh, I don't want smog in. I want log in. Silly me. Um, you can do things here like um, in investigate the console, um, which is going to be um, extremely helpful if we're ever debugging stimulus controllers or something like that as we get more features into this application. So uh, I will close this browser, which should cause the test to fail. All right, so let's get back get rid of the debugger statement. I'll show you what happens in a headless. All right, we, we already failed at headless. Uh, never mind, so we'll, we'll unbreak this. All right, and now we can um, rerun this, make sure that it's 
still working. See, now it's going to launch it in the window. Um, I don't know which, I've got two monitors here. It's gonna show here. So you can see if we were to slow down this uh, this video on YouTube or whatever, you can see that it's, it's actually going through and doing all of those motions. It's doing them very quickly, but it's doing them. Uh, so that is uh, giving us what we want there. So we've tested that. Uh, let's think about some other scenarios we want to test though. Um, so we, and I'll back to our project here. Um, I'm gonna move this kind of into in progress so that we're thinking about it as we go. So sign up error uh, works as intended. So we're going to add a new test here. Signing up fails if uh, invalid email. I think these will just become stub like skip stub tests if I just do it like this. Um, we'll say uh, that's a little tighter language. Sign up fails if password to short. Passwords don't match. Fails if invalid invalid confirmation token. So uh, similar to what I did before, and rather than, um, and I probably even could have. Um, paused and not had you watch me type these out, but um, I'll write the uh, my first iteration on this method and then we will uh, take a look at it. If it fails, we'll fix it and we'll go from there. All right, so I um, realized something in this uh, invalid email. So um, if you type something here that isn't an in, isn't a valid email, it doesn't Respond like actually go to the um, the server here, so we can see. Actually, it's saying shared error messages. That's interesting, but it, it's instead of like if I um, do one that's already taken or something here. It'll say one error prevented it from being saved. Um, email has already been taken, but here, if I just do something invalid altogether, it's giving me kind of a I don't even know. Like I can't click on it to uh, to even see it in the DOM. Let me. See if I can do a control U here. Uh, elements. form here. Error explanation.
not even seeing the the change in the DOM when that happens. Hmm. Well, I guess if I can, maybe I can capture the the text message and see if it still is assertable via assert text. So. if that is runnable. I also went in and on the user here um, the, the happy path test here assertions about the state of the user so reload the user um, assert that the um, confirmed at and remember created at I think is the Run both of these, there's a chance that both of them will fail. Uh, let's run it normally for now. Uh, so we've got four failures now. No implementation provided. So we've got five runs, four failures. Uh, uh, so I guess the, the first set of assertions there did pass uh, and we loader did not find text. Please include at an email address. that in our device translations here I'm just going to skip this one uh, we want in addition here, if if email address has been taken, so here we'll just do all this, and then we will do this with users dm dot email and then we will want the and I should have been doing this all along um, email has already been taken
password is too short. We'll just try to knock these all out in fairly short order. So before case it's going to be password is too short minimum is eight characters there. So this is our invalid email that we're skipping right now anyway. Oh, I am just all over the place. Email address has already been taken. That is password is too short. I mean, I've got them backwards. All right. The dangers of cutting and pasting. So, email address has been taken. That is our use case there. And you can see there's an opportunity for refactoring. Um, so we will just see how we're doing here. Syntax error. So an email with what have I done? Seventy line seventy five. So this is our invalid email situation and then we want new user password for rest of these. Now let's see if what we've got so far is passing. All right, so line 100. That's because too short is eight letters.
So our skipped test here, let's see. We can at least identify anything to um, indicate the state of the DOM for this. Don't want password is too short here. What was the email? there please include an at in your email address all right let's try it again might have still skipped it. We'll find out. Uh, we've got our failure here. Sign up, sign in. Email, password. We'll run this with the I'll keep I'll skip that and we'll get our other um, other ones working here. So our other unhappy path tests. Uh, passwords do not match. So that is Similar to this here. Okay, so new user password. message is password confirmation doesn't match password. doing here all right so we've got other than the skip that's working the way we want it to now this one is going to be interesting because it's going to be almost the whole um, what happens when you uh, send sign, do a confirmation token that isn't legitimate. So 
users confirmations confirmation token equals more stuff confirmation token is invalid so it takes you to the resend confirmation instructions page interesting Once we get this working, we'll refactor it all out. So all of this is good up until this point. And then should assert text confirmation token is invalid do it in the correct order here. This goes. So we're all passing except for that skipped test. I'll, I'll pause and do a little bit of research and see if I can figure out how to um, test that invalid email situation. Um, but um, we'll go from there all right so I think I've found the answer to this question so if I go into the, um, the item here if I have this value here it does this this is an HTML5 form validation so we go back up here I did uh, document query selector user email and then you can do email validity Dot valid, and you can see that it's false. And then if you do email dot report validity here, you can see that's what is occurring there. So, um, and then this uh, medium article here, I think, gives me the other um, part of this. So, uh, page dot find, um, assuming that that is the same for um, the um, for, for mini test as it is in our spec uh, but I, I should be able to then um, validation message and then assert about that so let's give that a try here go to our failing test invalid email so We'll see if we can do something along the same lines here. And this is going to be user email. This might not match exactly, but maybe this will at least give us an 
indication that we're trending in the right direction. Method, error message. Did I just, where are we here? Oh, we need to do. Uh, was it on line 78 that we failed here? Yep, line 78. Just assert equals line seventy eight. All right, let's try that out. Good. That means that we are almost passing this. Back to, I don't know why it keeps going all the way down. All right, we'll line break this thing. let Rubicop fix that after I run that, but let's see if we can get to passing here. Yay! All right, we're up and running. I'm sure I didn't change any application code, so the test itself shouldn't change. So let's see what RuboCop thinks about what we've done. Stickler for the rules. Most of them are correctable. What are we down to here? Down to three. Uh, documentation comment. Too many lines in the class. Um, block length. Signing up and confirming user. Uh, so that that we can do some refactoring on. I think we can also, with with refactoring, get under 100 lines for this class. So let's start doing that. Um, so here, this visit welcome URL that we've got all over the place. That looks like a um, perfect opportunity for some assertions. We will call them did we just we're in the okay so it auto corrected to create a module there so after this we're going to have def um, Make it a 
bang method because it will fail the test and raise an error if it does not succeed. So visit welcome URL. We still want to, um, we don't want to include that because sometimes we want to do these assertions um, after, like in the context of following a redirect or something like that. But uh, we should be able to do that. And we'll do that in this one place, make sure that we're not breaking our tests. Good. Apply this elsewhere. So we do this again. That's always on the welcome page, so we can just take that out and move it there. Welcome page, logged in assertions. Click on sign up. And then I think we can just call them again. So logged in state. Uh, and then we're asserting about the flash there. Then we are going down. These are going to be uh, login page assertions. And honestly, these should probably be in the application system test case because there are going to be other times where we want to make these same assertions. So let's move this out of this altogether. And since we're inheriting from this, all right, so we've got that there. That should still work because we're inheriting from that class. Similar situation for logged in welcome page assertions. These are the common ones, so we're, we're not going to put any flash messages or anything like that in here, but uh, this is the text confirm so this is the still have 
nerd dice in it. Save that. I think there's a flash message here. Uh, that we did not include before. Signed in successfully. Assertions about the state of the user. see if Rurokab is less upset with us. I'm less upset with me. Alright, so 123 out of 100. Uh, we're still potentially little long there. Let's see what else we can, how far, how close are we? Uh, 30 out of 25. All right. So the welcome sign up page assertions that can be its own little method there. And then well, that only saves us one line per method, but I think we can instead of um, I think we can do the fill in on top of the other fill in so we can have like a standard fill in Just call it sign up. Eh. Debatable about which way I want to go in implementing this. I want sign up page assertions. Let's go and hunt those down. Okay. 
standard sign up fill in. What we're going to do on these other ones, the un unhappy path ones, we're going to do the assertions and then we're going to refill in the um, we'll get in the habit of specifying these ones Sign up and then click on sign up again. All right. So now I'll do the second half of this buttons. I'll, I'll, I'll just pause and do that at the end. Uh, but essentially, we're going to take in all of these cases, we'll go in and apply the welcome page assertions. The sign in page, sign up page assertions, and then the sign up fill in, and then we'll we'll change it. I'll I'll do it once just to show us what we're doing, and then I'll repeat it across. So email address is taken. Visit welcome URL. This will be. Not logged in assertions, sign up flow, sign in page assertions, standard lineup fill in, and then you do what you're going to do to break it, then you click on it, and then our error occurs. So I'll and then I'll I'll apply that to the rest of these and then we'll see how we're doing from a Rubocop standpoint. Alright, so let's take a look at after doing this, uh, this is much shorter and easier to read each of these um, kind of standard page fill in and then we um, make the um, the incorrect attribute uh, invalid and then we go on. I think there's another opportunity to refactor here um, on the um, the confirmation part. So this, these are statements are um, repeated kind of between the um, the happy path version of this and the um, and, and the confirmation part of this. So um, I don't think we're, the only thing we're doing here is assigning an unconfirmed user. But otherwise, we can refactor that out into a Happy path unconfirmed. All of this becomes. Actually, we need to add it um, the start time as a. Um,
otherwise, we can take all of this right until here. didn't return the unconfirmed user. make this now and in fact we don't need the start time if we are returning the user so that no longer becomes a concern returning it. And then we just need to Rename this to user. Do the same thing in the I don't even need the user there. So this now becomes all this can go away. We'll add in some comments here after we um, get this working, but that should still work if I refactored it without breaking anything. And let's see here, signing up and confirming a new user. So line 15. I still have that old variable. Let's try it again. Yay, all right. Let's see what RoboCop is thinking about this. All right. So it's giving us a problem with test method. I'll just disable those.
starting in our starting here. And I did this in my last commit on the Tailwind Helper. There we go. That is the syntax for this. And it's going to be disable and then enable at the end. making those methods private would have to method has too many lines Correct. So ABC size and method length. to other than maybe this user part is something that could be uh, I'm trying to think here. I think we'll just disable it for that one method. Eh. How do we make this as I mean, all these have visit welcome page and welcome page 
not logged in assertions. I think I kind of want to keep those though. But one place where we could potentially do this is And that will return implicitly the unconfirmed user. So we could uh, see if Google Cog is gets upset about that. That can all be in this method. Note that in the comment because that would be something that you could easily miss. Rubocop. to two or one line away from that magic 100 if there's another opportunity to trim this down So we can do a, I don't know if this actually will grant us anything. over and over again that might another opportunity to not repeat ourselves and we'll make it a bang method because it can raise an error
that time you don't need it. All right, Rubocop. You have been sated with the exception of our documentation comment. I'll pause and write a documentation comment. All right, I've got my documentation comment for the class. See if Rubocop has been sated. We are good. We will take a look through our whole test suite. And why is our coverage here? They're just covering different places. Hopefully, that won't fail our build. We'll make that a watch item. All right, so we've only uh, created that one test class and uh, updated application system test case. We can add that, write our commit message. All right, so I've got my commit message. We will push to the remote. Pause and let that build finish. All right, our action has completed successfully including the check there. Oh, and our coverage increased here because we, ah, we're back up to 100%, excellent. So we, we that our device um, can override controller there because we have tests hitting it now, both happy and unhappy paths um, and using turbo um, that is now covered. So we're back up to 100%. Let's go into our issue. Edit the subtask to be done. Move our task to done. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching this stateless codecast. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. You can follow us on social media at Stateless Code. Until next time, keep coding and don't aggress against peaceful people or vote for others to do so on your behalf.